Alrighty then, let's get on into it here tonight. We've got a lot to cover. We're gonna go through the room results and I've got a lot of things that we wanna cover, particularly around some of the training. So if you guys haven't seen LunchBot yet, again, we talked about that in one of our most recent videos, a full walkthrough video on the latest Ninja Trader 8 version is coming, but just wanna talk about some of the results here over the last two weeks. Top left-hand corner should tell you the results from each one of the uh, instruments that we're trading. And again, this is, these results are you know designed to be spread across multiple instruments. So if any given single instrument is down a single day, what we're doing is diversification inside of our robotic strategy. So diversification via robotic trading. Very, very awesome, very powerful. So we got uh, 4,000 here on NQ. That is the, that's the big guy. Uh, number two in line, man, almost neck and neck, RTY for 2,600 each for the RTY and the YM. Um, that's, uh, let's just call that 5,000. That's four, nine, and two and a half more. So over 11, almost $12,000 over a two week period. Not too bad for a fully automated system that only runs during the lunch hour. Awesome, awesome results there. Now let's uh, get into the room results. So our members, let's just get into some of this here. Here's Gabby crushing it at, this was again from yesterday and today's results. I wanna go through that. And we'll talk about the difference between yesterday's price action and then today's and really important things around speed that we talked about in the most recent video on those top 10 things that we needed to go through and how did we choose and how can we figure out that today was a tougher day very very easy ways to do that as i'm going to show you guys here in a moment now yesterday people were absolutely crushing it remember the market cadence okay so we had two candy days in a row today being wednesday a little bit of a tougher day not impossible as you guys will see but you'll see some of the members talking about how man what's going on with today like what's going on with the market today we'll show you guys how we were able to anticipate that but still even with the the toughness of the market I want you guys to see some of the results here from the members 3300 here for Gabby 100% profitable again really can't go too much to say about you know you can't go through a whole lot of stats when your profit factor is basically 99 which basically you know it's 100% profitable 10 trades 3300 I mean great job Gabby absolutely smashing it KC smashing it with 2100 there awesome work there 3.36 profit factor, that's awesome. That means the winners are 3.36 times the size of the losers. Great work there from KC. Big Mini Fridge, trading the micros, $226. That's $2,200 in minis. Profit factor, again, here is the biggest one right there at the profit factor. This is our most important thing, in my opinion. 3.18, winners 3.18 times the size of the losers, plus 83% profitable, um, yeah, awesome work there big mini fridge loving it whiskers 100 percent also look at this 100 percent 400 bucks hitting his target on the day great stuff and he said uh, great tools awesome stuff there my friend okay john what do we got here from john 3700 97 profitable holy shnikes 99 profit fact i mean basically you may as well have been 100 on that excellent work there um 44 wow awesome stuff there john loving it mr monta on the micros again 200 awesome that is 2100 in minis profit factor again the biggest thing there winners being three times the size of his losers and 66 percent profitable winning combination very small drawdown on it awesome work there my friend Manny, how do you do here? 500, hit the 500 target there for the day. 100% man, look at all these people. Again, yesterday, I think a lot easier than today. The numbers are just absolutely killing it. There's Remo. He didn't get his 20, uh, 2112. He's, if you guys go watch the history on Remo, he hits 2112 somehow, like all the time. It's very interesting. But I uh, hit 1500 there yesterday. Awesome work there. He added some more to it, 600 as Manny is pushing it, going a little bit farther there. Um, Eddie, first time trading the NQ, waiting to, can't wait to join the group. All right, great to have you there with us, Eddie. Um, two try rules, so who was I talking to on this one? Uh, Joshua said, something I'm starting to pick up on is even if I try my first trade on a good setup, it's barely stopped out, sometimes it's worth getting back in. Now, I brought this up because, again, this is a standard thing for us to try rule. If something breaks, and look, I would rather you stop out quickly, which is how we keep that profit factor um, in check, okay? If something stops out, again, we really don't want to, don't, it's just a really good habit to have in breaking bad habits by just going, I'm gonna take my stop right where it is. If it's a small stop, it's okay. That little loss is not a big deal, and I would rather you do it two tries. So 
Um, Joshua there is just confirming what I've already kind of taught you guys with the two try rule. If there's a great setup there, it's still gonna be great. You know, minutes later, if it comes back to that level, um, you know, my favorite example is the double cross play. Okay, I've got two crosses there. If we are getting long, okay, price is coming into an area, we're trying to get long, but the first move that it does is kind of comes up like this and we stop out, okay? So as the second cross comes in, I want to enter in long on a double cross, okay? Where's my stop gonna be? Stop's gonna be down here at the bottom of the cross. If this comes in and stops out right here, so what? Again, very small stop out, but if price comes back through, kind of does one of these and comes right here and starts going again, I can re-enter this same trade. Oops. Oh, for a second. So if my first entry, um, you know, came in and we get that little stop out. Okay. So my, my loss here again, keeping it nice and small. Now, if I get my, my second one, okay. If I come over here and price comes back through again, I can re-enter right here. Okay. At the double cross, I'll take it for a second shot. Now, again, if the market comes back down and does it twice to me, oh, that sucks. Okay. We will have the two try rule. That is what the two try rule is. If this happens twice, okay, we're done, right? Like, let's let's move on, let's look for something else, let's wait for our next setup. That can happen. But what often happens, what Josh was pointing out, is that if I come back and give it a second shot, okay, stops it out by a couple of ticks and the setup comes back in, he's like, man, it's just such a good trade setup. So this is exactly what we're talking about Two try rule, but not three. Never three, right? We do not strike out around here. Baseball analogy, right? Three strikes, you're out. We do not three strike to get out, okay? We are not going to swing three times, but we will swing twice, okay? So what, you hit a foul ball, no big deal, boom, thing comes back and it's right down the middle again. Again, beautiful setup. If it's gonna be a good setup, it's still gonna be a good setup. And then we're gonna be exiting there on, on a double cross in this case, I want it all the way up here. But if you've got a trade setup where you got target one, target two, and we've got runners, you know the drill, but two try rule, very important um, concept that we want to talk about here tonight to just reiterate. And one of our members kind of said, you know, hey, he's noticing it at the same time, the rules that we've already taught. Sting Ox crushing it. Another, wow, is this another 100 percenter? Holy cow. Only three trades. That's me in remember, trades. That is clicks, right? How many times clicked? Three clicks. Boom. 730 bucks. 100 percent profitable. Outstanding work there. Sting Ox. Great stuff. Too much fun. Love Confluence, Mac V and Histogram watching uh, to green double dot and king timing. So he's got king timing on double dot coming right there at the king timing. Excellent work. He is pointing out he's got the shift over into the green and getting long there on that one. Did he have a uh, favorable direction? This one a little bit nervous on this. So be careful on these. If you're trying to say that the Mac V was with you, be very careful. Okay. I can tell that that gray, you are in the gray area there and the previous zone was actually red. So keep an eye on this one. But if you're gonna go for target one, I'm totally fine with that. Just be careful on getting target two or more. That should be a note for everybody if you see something like this. But he did say Confluence Mac V. Be careful, a little bit wrong on this. Again, I gotta be here to correct a little bit. Technically, the Mac V is not with you, okay? Now, it's shifting, right? And over here in the far left, if you're looking up here at the top left and you're seeing that the big picture is still green, okay? I'll give it to you on that one. Be very careful. Now, one of the things I'd also just noticed is that you've got the open line right there. So again, I would say that this is probably a better play because you had the open line right there as well. You see that gold line right there? It's really orange, it's not a gold one. But that orange line, dash line there, that is the open line. So this shorts favorable is really agnostic. That doesn't count. So all you're looking for is purely the MACV here. And if you're looking at the Algo matrix right there, then the algo matrix is telling you the left side, high time frame is good. This side is going good. So hopefully you're reading it like that. Please pay attention to that. Um, but anyway, that's those are my critiques on that, but awesome stuff, loving it. And he hit it, targets filled. Very good, very good. I think that's just target one and target two. Looks like you got both. Yes, very, very nice there, Mr. Whiskers. Excellent work. Uh, here we were talking about headsets. Some people were asking about the headsets that we use. Um, I originally really liked these. Um, I got my kids these and tested them out and I go, you know what? I actually like these for myself. They're lighter weight. I like the looks and the features of this one, but really overall sound quality and comfort. G733 for the headsets for the win and they're wireless. Awesome stuff. All right. Uh, Napoleon said, uh, day number two, starting with 2500, deserve a slap in the face, but the lesson is, I understand, MACV is the key. Yes, yes, please, MACV is key. Don't trade against it. I'll give you advice when you trade. Think MACV is 
<laughs> I guess uh, that Dutch. Google this and look it up and it says if you don't want to be against him. Basically don't be against this guy. Yeah, awesome stuff. Listen to Alga Boxes and the Vinny. Um, he still didn't have a big red day. It was at minus 11 bucks. <laughs> but he's probably frustrated that he didn't hit in the positive and that is a good note to, to put in right there. DG, 456 bucks there, 100% for, oh my word, you guys were smashing it yesterday. Again, I want you guys to take a note of yesterday versus today. Oh, ha <laughs> ha. There's Remo hitting his 2112. We always joke about the 2112 against the 90s uh, connection back from a 2112 rush. Awesome stuff. He did hit 2112 yesterday. And I guess that the first one was from the morning session, but he had cleaned up at that point. Hit 2112. Awesome stuff there. Central AM traded clean on NQ up to 2K and then took an ES trade. It's not really great. Took too long, added to get out. Reminds me why I haven't traded ES in a few months. How do you do here? 3,300 still on the day, but he's talking about that drawdown, right? He basically had a one-to-one -one drawdown on the max drawdown, but the profit factor overall from multiple trades that he did, still profit factor being 1.61, winners being 1.61 times the size of his losers. And good analysis, appreciate you putting in the words on that central AM. DG's working on a new desk there. Big mini fridge, how do you close out the day? 2,382% profitable, profit factor 10.1. Four one winners 10.47 times the size of his losers that is awesome work sir all right now we're shifting into a new day this is today i want you guys to to, to take a note of the results from yesterday versus today and how we talked about at some point today that i said look at how slow this is this is the day to go and do other things and again that couldn't be if you're brand new with us that you should be practicing going over to market replay executing or feeling out a day like today to know that this is the type of day to walk away but how would we know this in real time? Because this is some of the, the questions. A lot of people are worried about, well, how do I do it in real time? So I always recommend that you have multiple instruments, okay? And this is a key reason why, okay? I want, want to really hit in on this, why this is important. Because a lot of people think, well, I don't really have to, but I mean, I can get, I can get enough trades out of NQ or YM on most days yes on most days especially with our system yes but i am i am setting you up for long-term success in any market conditions i don't care if the market gets super slow and the volatility dries up if you just follow and do what i what i'm encouraging you to do i've been doing this for 15 plus years seeing a lot of markets and again i have been in fast markets slow markets super slow markets super fast markets everything in between and I'm telling you what multiple instruments, one of the things that it does is helps you with days like today, where this is what I call, again, this, today's not a candy day. Today was a harder day. And what makes it hard? What is it? It's actually speed. Now, some people were saying, oh, well, it's because it's choppy. Eh, we'll say that, but again, choppy is still up down. Can I make money going up and down? Yes. Can I, can I get in and, you know, are there, are there movements in there? Yes. What we care about is the speed though. When the speed is so slow, you can't you can't read well and the algorithms are hunting through picking up orders. You you're not going to be doing as well if you don't have speed, okay? So, how can you tell if you've got speed or not? Well, first of all, the multiple instruments if you've got one single instrument, you might think, oh, well, it must just be this one. What if another instrument is going hot? It's very easy to see. Like when I've got mine spread out across my main six screens and I can see um, four of the main e-mini instruments and you can just tell. You just doesn't even, there's no rocket science to it. I just kick back and I'm like, wow, nothing's moving. This is the time to walk away, do other things. And then what I will say, one of the keys to this is Turn your music up, turn the audio up, and listen to the audio box room. If you don't know what I'm talking about with audio box, over on the left-hand side, um, hit right in here, go into the E-mini trade floor, okay? And you can listen to the aggressiveness of the tape and basically just walk away from your desk. Don't keep your eyes on it. Don't be sitting there being tempted into bad trades, but listen, and all of a sudden, if you hear, blah, 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 which by the way, happened at the end of today, right? How many of you guys saw like, okay, the day was crawling, creeping, crawling, but at the end of the day, uh, 10 minutes before the close, all of a sudden you just start to hear, and I mean, you could have made your, you know, your whole month's pay in, uh, you know, 10 minutes between 3.50 and 4 o'clock when that drop came in, right? And uh, you'll see some of that in the numbers here today, but today um, should be taking a note from yesterday to today. Go and grab, if you're grabbing some practice, grab two days of market replay, okay? Today is uh, June the 23rd, 2021. 
Okay, so today is the 23rd, grab the 22nd and the 23rd. And I want you to play those two days back to back and see the difference, feel the difference, write it down, put it in your mental template and write it down on your, on your journal notes and make sure that you understand fast, slow days and how you'll notice how much easier those fast days are than the slower days. Just keep that in, in mind and let's go through some of the results. Now, people who traded early morning where there was some quick action in the very early morning, there was a little bit right in the middle of the, the afternoon and then far at the, the end of the day. Those are the only really three sections where today you had some speed um, to really you know get going. So the morning section here, some people did all right who got in and traded super early. Uh, here's an example. Gabby hit 23.30 there off the, the bat. 94% profitable. Awesome. Look at that profit factor. 21. So again, wow, it's huge. Uh, small, small drawdown. Basically, I mean, he basically hit everything. 94%. Uh, Excellent work there, Gabby, for the morning one. John P. said, uh, morning, 90 minutes done. Not super happy with performance, but goes to show that closing out bad trades as early as possible, not holding them, even with a poor win percentage, can put yeah, put you out on top with a good day. Now, want to point this out. This is great. This is, you know, Adam Smasher has, you know, said this um, a whole lot in our crew. You know, this percent profitable, when people come, Vinny, what's your percent profitable, right? Yeah, he's pointing out that, look, that may not seem like a high percentage, like 49%, you know, he's taking more losers than winners, technically, okay? But when you combine and you've got the profit factor, which is why I tell everybody, like, this is actually a more important number that I want to know what the profit factor is versus percent profitable. Now, again, you really need to keep them in combination. But the thing that is really killer about our system is this profit factor right here. If you just put your stops in the proper location, let the target one, target twos do their work, and on occasion, get your runners pushed out and hit only on a opposing signal, man, you like you are going to see the results. And that's what he's pointing out here is that even though you got a low percentage, like he said, he's like, well, you know, it doesn't look real great. And, you know, a little bit, probably more max drawdown than he'd like to have, but pulling out 1500 on the day with a 1.74 profit factor, awesome work there. And I appreciate you, you know, hitting in on that lesson there, John P. He's a little bit new with us, but again, he's already picking up on the concepts and the things that we teach in the training lessons. So awesome stuff. Big mini fridge, also new person with us, still almost hitting the $500 target there. Again, today was a tougher day. Profit factor, 2.8, oh my word, that is awesome. 69% profitable, excellent work there, my friend. Now, I think he said over trade because 13, again, remember that stat is wrong on NinjaTrader. That is how many times you click the button, that does not tell you how many trades you took, all right? You can click the button five times on a single trade and it will show five trades, but it was only one trade from end to end. So be careful of that number, don't always read on that. You are to track that on your five trade piece of paper that we have over there. You know, you guys know the one, you guys have seen me talk about that a lot. So I won't go into much detail on that. Walking away while I'm ahead, Jeremiah said, awesome work, almost a thousand bucks there, $980 profit, I mean, 100% profit for holy cow, click the button 14 times, excellent work there, Jeremiah. Uh, Foosh Pro John, 2,300, 90% profitable, profit factor, look at that thing, almost six, 5.94, excellent work there. John, you're just seeing the matrix, brother. Joshua, how did you do here today? 1K target reached. Again, he's got his mental target at 1K. Look at this guy, 100% profitable. Even on a tough day. Today, folks, was a tough day. But again, like I said, the morning, if you just traded the early morning, took it quick, good. But any time after that, man, the 11 to 12, like this is a tougher time. Now, some people had a tough time. Again, DG, 12 bucks, it's okay. A little bit new with us. Engines, uh, he's been around with us for a while. Um, you know, I'd like to kind of talk to him, see, you know, what was going on with this setup, you know, what, what happened there, minus 60 bucks there. <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad losing day when you compare those to the win size that you guys will see here on a regular basis. Again, we have some red days, folks. All right, 60 bucks, <laughs> that's a tough one. All right, day's goal accomplished, trying to stay consistent, discipline improving, excellent work there, Manny. How'd you do here today? $573, again, still punching past, eight, you know, our minimum, still hitting past that 573, wow, 100% profitable, eight clicks, amazing work there, sir. Uh, John, this is a loss that occurred because I failed to listen to the master and didn't sit on my hands at 10 a.m. All right, let's take a peek at this one. Um, thanks, John, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know what that was. <laughs> But failed to listen to the master and didn't sit on my hand. Oh, didn't sit on his hands. Oh, okay, so so time of day. Although time of day, I also didn't see a setup. So I, I will say, you know, 10.10 to 10.30. Okay, yeah. Um, took him, taking one at, sorry, sorry. 
But uh, I wish I would have known what the setup was too. If you want to maybe mention later in the Discord chat, tell us what that trade actually was. Um, that way we can review that one as well. Yeah, maybe I didn't see. 91% profitable. Uh, yeah, profit factor 10. His winners were 10 times the size of his losers. Look at that little tiny drawdown for 2K. Uh, stellar work there, Central AM. Excellent work. Took one more and you're out to the afternoon. 2300 closing up there into the morning session. Again, now, <laughs> you guys are like, wait a minute, Vinny, I thought you said that today was a little bit tougher. Well, yes, the folks who traded in the middle of the day had a little bit more, more problems because of the speed. Some people were saying, man, why is it so slow? It's a little bit trickier. Again, the numbers really don't show it. We didn't have people like absolutely just getting crushed, but I'm going, today was tougher, okay? If you if you trade them side by side, you will notice you didn't get as many trade setups. They were harder. You'd have to kind of look through things. Uh, he's got a blue dot on the king plus J hook. Um, oh yeah, he's in the, and he's in the zone too. Uh, did a little bit of a break there, but he's taking it. Hey, you know what? That's a good shot. I would take that same trade. I wouldn't be putting it up here trying to hit the whole J hook here off of that one, but you got the confluence of it. Why not? Excellent work there, sir. Taking your money and hitting it. Excellent work there for target one, target two. Good stuff there, Whiskers. Uh, hey guys, can anyone tell me why I don't see the same things on ES and MES? Uh, this is common. We talk about this all the time. Those are not the same. A lot of people think that they're same. Folks, they're not. Like, I'm just, I'm, there's really nothing more to say. Do not think that in the, the micro is the exact same as the as the main okay it's not the, the micro and the mini they're different they've got different volumes all that kind of stuff so if you see different signals and whatnot yes in general the structures are going to be there they're going to be pretty darn close but no they are not going to be the same so you know if somebody asks that question please help people out and say they're not the same it's as simple as that right um tough tough morning today for me dg pulling away with 300 again a little bit less than our minimum um for minis but hey you know i'm coming away with 300 <laughs> The, those are our tough days, folks. Um, DCDM with green dot J hook, long for confluence. Yes, please. And I see he is marking out the trap zone. Excellent work there. Then he's got his double cross, double move with a green dot. Oh, these are some of my favorite right there. Awesome play there, sir. And only thing I would critique is I know it's tempting to front run those, but I'll tell you right now, like oftentimes you actually want to kind of back run these because these will oftentimes go through a two tick, a few ticks past the gold zone. So if you're taking a double cross, double move, remember, I'm really maxing, uh, maximizing what I'm coming away with on a double cross, double move. This is that cool play that you can really just take home the cake. You don't have to go for target one, target two. He did push him out, okay? But that gold line is, I mean, maybe one tick in front of that, but you're, you know, you're, you're, you're leaving some food on the table. You know what I'm saying? You're leaving some serious money on the table when you are front running that gold line. It is just so powerful. Look how many times, again, this is one of those where if you play them enough times, you'll gain that confidence. I, I know that's hard to, to do. You just, it's practice. You just have to execute them and you'll see what I'm talking about. But just hear what I'm saying. Try to get yourself to get those as close to the gold line as possible. You will see it in your PL. It will make a lot of difference. Um, Thanks, John, for answering that question there on the micros and the minis. Uh, John, if you guys want to read in on that, what John had to say about it, but he's saying the same thing I was saying about the micros and minis, not the same. Um, yes, we reiterated that. Okay, now, um, here's one of the things I wanted to point out. Uh, so, uh, at this point of the day, I am up 5K. I think I ended up taking some losses in the afternoon. I ended up closing out the day at around 4,300. But, at this point of the day, not too bad. But I wanted to show this mirror play. Again, people, this is a little bit advanced. We don't talk about this too often. But when I've told you guys about the anti-mirror, okay, uh, I saw it here. I had curve one. Here comes curve two. A lot of people think, oh, okay, well, they look right here. You put a divider line. Here's the, here's the mirror, okay? Mirror on the left side, mirror on the right side. People look over here to the left and like, oh, well, what happened the last time I saw this little hump? Oh, well, we move up. Okay, oh, look, I see another one little hump. Now it will actually tend to be the exact opposite and get wrecked. For the very moment where people will think, oh, um, you know, recency is key and a lot of people, you know, and I say people, not us, not our room, but I'm talking about retail traders. This is a great trade strategy where if you see a structure to the left and then you see another one that looks almost identical to it, just to the right of it, and where it's in people's purview on their charts and they're like, oh, okay, this I'm, I'm gonna take this shot. Oftentimes those are great wrecking opportunities to go the opposite direction. So one of the things that I was showing there on that and kind of wanted to talk about. And again, this is where things started to really get tricky um, at this point of the day. And um, 
in the slowness. We really started to get things slowed down. I'm um, talking about audio box. Um, some some basic new person question. If you are kind of new with us, and uh, Napoleon's a little bit new with us, he's asking about which of the data feeds you need. You do not need market depth. You only need top of book. So if you are getting your data feed, all you need is top of book. Answer that there for him. If you guys want to go check that out. Uh, my emotions telling me to take a shot at the short, but will not trade against MACV. I'd rather miss a trade and take a loss. Double dot, flow master cross. Excellent work. Folks, this is what I'm talking about. This is where you are going to see massive success when you start to think like this. Your emotions are telling you what you want to do, what you physically want to do, but you go ahead and you follow the rules anyways. Your PL will show for it on that. Excellent work, stick into the program and the plays. And again, I'm seeing him in the green there, up 450 bucks at this time of day. Awesome stuff there, sir. Keep up the good work. Okay, now is this where I kind of talked about this? Yes, okay, so I asked everybody around 2.30, I said, can you guys feel how slow the market is today? This is exactly the type of market you do not want to spend a lot of time at. This is a day to walk away. Um, you can turn your sound up on your computer and maybe listen from afar and hear the audio box kicking hard. So this is kind of what we talked about earlier. Just sit over here in the E-mini trade floor. Today is the type of day where when you feel that, that you can come over to your desk when things start to kick and this happened to kick there at 3.50 in the afternoon. All right, I'm running out of time here. <laughs> Going a little bit farther than I wanted to anyways. Uh, outside of the massive activity, basically the short answer was today was slow versus yesterday being fast and easy. Today was a little bit more trick, uh, a little trickier. And again, you can still see the results of our room. It's what I always want to point out. Like for us, people can complain all day and say things like, oh, your, your system's too colorful and it looks bright. It looks, uh, you know, too easy and whatnot. And well, that's the point is to make it very, very clear and let our results speak for themselves. You know, I challenge other trade rooms to come and try to beat us. I mean, I will take on any Furu Guru one-on-one -on -one in a trading contest. Um, you know, our members versus your members, whatever you guys want to do, again, come bring it. Our results speak for themselves, you know, and we really just want people to know about it so that they have the opportunity to not get wrecked by all these scammers and uh, Furus out there. So uh, look at this, 1433, is that 100%? Another 100 on a tough day, Jeremiah. Again, he just stuck to the rules. This is Jeremiah who was saying, I know, like, I feel like I want to go take that short, but I'm sticking with the MACV. And look at this guy, 100% profitable, sticking to the MACV filter rules. That alone is what I've told you guys before. Like, you want to not blow out your account, just that single rule alone will keep you in the game. Awesome work. Thanks, Crossbow, and one of our longtime members, Founders Club, um, reiterating what we've talked about there. Uh, Benny said, this is my favorite part of your program. I don't have to understand or know why or how things happen. I just walk the path, come to understand, throw experience, or through experience, and coming away with p &L. That's That's exactly what you want to do. Um, okay, so tempting. So Gabby, talking about how he's so tempted to take this trade, but he's holding off. Very, very good. Awesome work. Proud of you guys. All right, so we're coming to... The end here. Oh wait, we might have one more. Let's take let's take this one here from Bob. Really nice headshot and DCDM. I just got what? <laughs> Can't pass that up. Look at that. Beautiful and the DCDM. Awesome stuff. And again, remember um, some of our new features. This actually you'll get an audio alert for this. Um, what I don't see on his charts. If you guys watch one of our recent videos where I'm going through the new list is the. The horizontals, I don't see any horizontals. You probably wanna put those in. You will notice that at those zones, they can kind of give you some additional confirmation when you get one of your setups over here. It's like, oh man, and I've also got one of these zones from, from prior, I definitely wanna hit that one. Particularly right here, you see you've got two bubbles right here. This would be drawing a horizontal over there for you to tell you that this is also another good zone to go ahead and take that shot, something to help you out there. John P. Uh, he was low on the morning and ended up closing the day. So again, end of day, what happened? Got boom, the drilling started to come. Bam, bam, he slammed 9K. I did not, I ended up kind of right before the big move came. I got hung up, lost about 800 bucks on my trade. So I kind of didn't get a part of that big drop move, unfortunately, but I saw a lot of our members crush that. 8K, 83% profitable there um, for Central AM. John P crushed it. I think somebody had 15,000. Who hit 15K? Um, there he is. Remel goes from his 2112 from yesterday to 15,000 today. All oh, just amazing work, folks. 
All right, I am way past my time. Thanks for hanging out here. I'll catch you guys in the morning. For me, Pippi, Robbie, Lunchbox, Matchbox, Curtis G, and the rest of the game. Listen, not the big H down. See ya.